Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. I'm intern Deacon Alex, and Happy New Year's Eve. <laughs> Hard to believe it's the end of 2023, but here we are. <laughs> um, we just have a few announcements to begin our worship this morning. Feel free to follow along in the white insert in your bulletin. Um, the radio and online services are given by Woody and Diane Peet with their greetings to everyone for a happy and prosperous New Year. So thanks to Woody and Diane for the bulletins and online ser- or radio and online services today. The bulletins are given in memory of Denny Westgard's birthday on January 5th from the Dale and Desiree Kemen and Scott and Bobby Joe Schreer families. (laughs) I'm doing my best here. I can't learn everyone's last name. (laughs) Um, So thanks to them for the bulletins. And let's take a moment to welcome those worshiping with us online, waving to the camera back there. Um, Thank you so much for joining us and Happy New Year. Wonderful. Um... Pastor Kendall and Emily are at a wedding this morning, so it's just me and Mason running the show and all of us together, so that's why um, Pastor Kendall is not here. In Sioux Falls for Eston Weber and Ashley Dirksen's wedding, so congratulations to them. They're not here, but let's give them a round of applause. (laughs) Congratulations on your wedding. Um, Next, we still have a ton of poinsettias up here, as you might have noticed. Um, If you made an order for a poinsettia this year and want to take one home to, you know, liven up the kitchen or whatever and have a beautiful plant in your home, um, please feel free to take those. Um, Yeah, thanks to everyone who ordered and helped to brighten up the sanctuary through that um, fundraiser. Next, a couple uh, youth announcements, confirmation in Sunday school. Uh, There's actually a little typo in the bulletin, so confirmation for 7th and 8th graders um, won't start up this week. It'll start up next week on January 10th. Um, But Alleluia Choir Rehearsal will begin again this Wednesday, January 3rd, and Sunday school will resume on Sunday, January 7th. Um, Similarly, with YAP and mentor meetings, we'll be holding our youth and parent meeting for students in grades 7 through 9 and their parents during the Sunday school hour at 10 a.m. on Sunday, January 14th. So if that's an important date for you, please note that. And our next mentor meeting for students in 8th and 9th grade will be on Sunday, January 21st. Um, So final announcement, thank you to all of our generous contributions in 2023. Um, We're starting to close the books on those fundraising dollars this year, so thank you so much for supporting Grace Lutheran financially in that way. Um, And please also prayerfully consider the work that we do at Grace, and if you're able, offer an additional gift by January 8th. We're still accepting Um, gifts through January 8th to help us end the year in a positive financial position 
So thank you in advance for your generosity. And with that, we'll begin our worship. And I left my bulletin up there, so we'll see what the next thing is. Is it a hymn? <laughs> oh, hey, thank you. <laughs> we'll start with an opening prayer and then sharing, followed by sharing with a piece. So let's pray together. Shine into our hearts and the light of your wisdom, O oh God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word that in all things we may think and act according to your good will and live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now please rise in body or spirit for our opening hymn number 275. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the maker of heaven and earth, the word made flesh, the Lord and giver of life. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of glory, God of peace, we confess that we have shunned the light that reveals the truth about us. We cling to worldly things rather than sharing the gifts of this earth. We trust ourselves above all. Save your people, O God. Sustain the rivers and trees that sing your praise and free us to live boldly in the light and truth of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. The grace of God shines upon us, bringing salvation to the whole world. We are saved, our sins are washed away, not because of anything we have done, but according to God's mercy in Jesus Christ. Renewed by the Holy Spirit, let us live in hope and joy. Amen. Now please be seated for What Child Is This?
Good morning. The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 61, verse, uh, starting at verse 10 and into 62, verse 3. Samuel, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, for, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her, sal and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that is the month of the Lord the mouth of the Lord will give you. You shall be crown a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal disdain in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. And the Psalm is Psalm 148, and we will reread that uh, responsively. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights. Praise him. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth. You see, mo you see monsters and all deep all deep fire and hail, snow and frost. Stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all people, princes and all rulers of the earth. Young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name above is exalted, his glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is designated, destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword shall peace your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phinuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Friends in Christ, peace to you on this New Year's Eve. Um, Happy New Year to us all. At this time of resolutions and newness, I get inspired. I like times in life where fresh starts are emphasized and something new begins. And New Year's can come with a lot of pressure too, doesn't it? At this time of year, I always remember the wisdom of one of my dearest mentors. Her name is Andrea. She's the director of family and youth ministry at my home church. Mount Calvary Lutheran in Excelsior, Minnesota. And she taught me not to make a New Year's resolution, but instead choose a word to hold throughout the year and grow into, choosing one word. I've been doing this for a few years now, choosing words like climate, rest, and peace. What I love about this is it's a resolution with no bounds. It's not a strict or reprimanding, but full of possibility and seeks to encompass our whole selves. It prompts us to ask, how can the various choices we make and directions we go this year be informed by this resolution word? When we fail at incorporating or even remembering the word, 
how can it gently nudge us back towards growth? How can it remind us of our intention for the new year? And most importantly, how can our words for the new year be rooted in praise of God? How do our choices and actions every day bring glory to the newborn Jesus, just like we sang about, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king? Today, our psalm reading describes such praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all hosts, sun and moon, sea monsters, fruit trees, stormy wind fulfilling his command, flying birds and all cattle. (laughs) Even cattle can praise the Lord. In another way, we see Simeon and Anna Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, praising the Lord through their choices and the directions they go and their devoutness. In all, our readings this morning describe vocation. Vocation, it's something each of us has, an ever-changing and growing collection of identities God calls us to. Martin Luther, Lutheran Church, was passionate about vocation. He wanted everyone to know they could serve and praise God not only as priests, but by caring for their children, respecting their neighbor's property and helping improve it for their benefit. Cooking, learning, being an activist, making art, repairing things. These are just a few examples of vocation. For us, our vocations are alive each day when they weave our passions and our neighbors' needs. When through them, we can confidently say we are praising God. For young baby Jesus in our gospel reading today, What growth and choices will come from his first new year of life? This initial space of powerful words of blessing from Simeon and Anna. For us today, what growth and choices will be before us as we enter a new year? Let's hear Simeon and Anna's words again. Upon seeing little Jesus, Simeon says, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. Anna follows by beginning to praise God and to speak about the child to all who are looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. We don't know much about Anna and Simeon on the whole. This is all we have in Scripture. Yet we catch these words manifesting their vocations of utmost Holy Spirit-imbued devotion to God. I picture both of them as old, grandparent-like figures, wrinkled smiles, deep eyes full of wisdom and prayer. We know they live out their vocations through constant communion with God, praying, listening, speaking with others in the temple about their visions of hope and salvation for all peoples. In another way, Mary and Joseph enter the scene. From the little we know about them, it is likely they were an impoverished couple traveling distances to the temple only occasionally. Yet, while they live out in the world, they still showcase their devoutness to God. The Gospel of Luke says, When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Knowing the Christmas story well, we know this couple has listened to God's warnings to move to different places to avoid danger, 
both have listened to angels' instructions and they are new parents. <laughs> Feeding, cleaning, warming, and loving their newborn child. Mary is blessed for her Magnificat, her song of praise and posture of saying, may it be according to your will, becoming the mother of Christ. We are beloved and created by God. From our readings on this New Year's Eve, it is apparent that all hosts All of creation, Mary, Joseph, Simeon, Anna, you, me, we have a spiritual obligation to live out our vocations as praise to God. Mary and Joseph, Simeon and Anna, these are four very different people with different lives and callings. Yet, each was called by God and manifested vocation in different ways. So, the question for today is, what are our vocations? What do we love to do that also serves God and our neighbors? How might we praise God anew through our vocations in this new year of 2024? To reflect on this and make it tangible, I invite all of us to choose a word sometime this week, a word of intention for growth this year. Let's remember my mentor Andrea's cool wisdom and ask God how our vocations can be revamped. Let's ask what we need spiritually. And let's move out into this new year and this world with some pizzazz. Amen. confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. (laughs) 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now please stand for uh, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, our next hymn. I invite you to be seated. We'll continue with our offertory hymn, The First Noel.
Please be seated for the prayers of the church. Graced by God's presence among us and gathered on this New Year's Eve, let us pray for the church all in our hearts and abide in the Savior's love. Emmanuel, God tabernacled with us, we celebrate, honor, and revere you today. The Christmas season is underway and we find ourselves amidst holiday celebrations. During this time, encourage us to remember the reason for the season, you. We pray amidst the midnight countdowns and tasty meals, we will give thanks for the gift of your presence among us. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creative God, thank you for the gift of vocation. Thank you for making each of us unique. Inspire us to praise you as your creation and live into our various callings. Whether we caretake, study and learn, garden or farm, clean, grow, parent, sport, advise, or dream. Inspire us in this new year to lean into the various ways you call us to love and serve us. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Redeemer, each one of us holds our own prayers this morning. We may be holding people we are thinking about, people we're missing, people we are in conflict with. Intrusive thoughts, ruminations, worries, memories, joys. God, we leave a few moments of silence to offer personal prayers to you now. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, you know us, our grieving and our pain. We thank you for your continued comforting love alongside each of us with whatever we hold this morning. Especially, Jesus, we lift up our neighbors, Wayne, Don, Mike, Rick, David, John, Joey, David, Tammy, Brad, Tom, Jack, Lauren, Jim, Monica, and Jennifer. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God among us, bless the gatherings. Bless the meals before us. Thank you for making seeds flourish into plants which nourish us. Thank you for spices and comfort foods, oven smells, Christmas cookies, and the loving hands who make them. Thank you for creating such an incredible and resilient planet to live on. Soil, people, water, air, Thank you for farmers of all kinds, truck drivers, and grocery store workers. Encourage us to remember where our foodstuffs come from and give thanks this holiday season, God. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creative Spirit, you give us the words to pray even when our speech falters. You know what we will ask for before we attempt to ask. We bring before you all in our hearts. We love you, and we ask for your intercession in our lives. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. And now let us sing the Lord's Prayer together using the uh, the tune of Away in a Manger. I invite you to please stand. Angels come, Lord, reign 
received this benediction blessing. May God strengthen you, may God love you, may God walk with you and be with you every step, every movement of this week, today and always. May Christ the Redeemer bless this new year and this new resolution time for you. May God bless your vocation, all those things that you do in service and love each day. I invite you to mark the sign of the cross on your forehead in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.